Welcome to our presentation for the Sustainable Tourism Course Project. I'm Jason Wong. And I'm Robinson Quay. Today we'll be providing you with an overview of how we could change Toronto for a more sustainable future. Five, four, three, two, one. Toronto is Canada's largest city and home to a diverse population of about 2.8 million people. The city welcomes over 25 million visitors annually and is the leading tourism destination in Canada. The Toronto Census Metropolitan Area has over 19,000 tourism related businesses employing more than 329,000 people. The sector also employs 60% full-time workers and includes over 9,000 restaurants. Too often we find ourselves eating at a local, independently owned restaurant, wondering why these establishments don't follow simple cost-efficient practices. We have come to the realization that this problem may be from a lack of awareness and knowledge. In this modern era, it is essential that the population as a whole become involved in order to achieve a more sustainable community. Our group will focus on these independently owned restaurants, smaller independent establishments may not plan as far ahead and thus ignore these ethical issues due to human resources or an inability to change. Small businesses may not have the training or the time that is implemented by the larger chain companies to practice environmental friendly strategies. Knowledge of the subject may not be known and thus awareness must be addressed in order to implement environmentally safe strategies. We decided that the best way to get our message across would be through a pamphlet providing as much information as we could with facts, practices, and useful links. We researched material relating to restaurants and found numerous sites that would become of assistance. As a result, we came to the purpose that we would like to make small businesses aware of how they can contribute to a healthy environment by using more sustainable cost-efficient approaches. This includes energy saving, waste and water disposal, food sourcing and food handling techniques. By making the restaurants aware of these practices, we would like to see a change for a better tomorrow. We also included practices to save and efficiently use water. It has been found that the average person uses 180 liters of water a day. Our tips to become efficient included checking for tap leaks that can waste water 24 hours, 7 days a week. Simple planning ahead of defrosting foods. Washing produce in a pot instead of running water. Replace existing toilets with new commercial flush meter high efficient models. Also, Toronto Hydro will provide grants and incentives to qualify food service businesses. Water saving is very important. According to unwater.org, more than 40% of people on our planet are living in countries or regions with absolute water scarcity. By 2025, two thirds of the population amounting to 1.8 billion people could be living under water stress conditions. We provided information for advantages to supporting the local food markets. Over 40% of all fruits and vegetables purchased in Canada are imported, including fruits and vegetables that are grown here, like strawberries and apples. The use of local foods is great for restaurants to promote. The food tastes better, are healthier with less pesticides, no-till farming is involved, and minimal packaging and shipping is needed. Transportation of food across long distances can cause excessive burning of fossil fuels, leading to emissions of greenhouse gases, adding to the problem of climate change. One of the approaches we focused on was minimizing food waste. It was interesting to find that Canadians throw away 40% of purchased food amounting to $27 billion annually. The pamphlet suggested that restaurants partner up with Second Harvest. 
Second Harvest is the largest rescue program in Canada. They are the main provider of fresh food to people in need in Toronto, with over 7 million pounds of food delivered in the past 12 months. Since 1985, Second Harvest has been picking up donated surplus food, which would otherwise go to waste, and deliver that food to community, community agencies in Toronto. Currently, Second Harvest delivers rescue food to over 200 community agencies. Food is donated by local retailers, manufacturers, restaurants, and caterers. The organization reduces p pollution by diverting rescued excess food from landfills. Over 3.3 million pounds of greenhouse gases are prevented every year. Energy saving would not only save restaurant costs, but also help contribute to Canada's greenhouse gas emission reduction. Simple practices such as using LED light bulbs last up to 10 times longer than CFLs and far longer than incandescents. Since LED light bulbs are made without mercury, disposals of such light bulbs would be less harmful for the environment. Regular maintenance and cleaning will help restaurants to cut costs by extending the longevity of the equipment. For example, refrigerators with dirty coils consume 23% more energy that emits extra greenhouse gas. After revisiting the restaurants, a survey was conducted to achieve results. It was difficult to manage responses from all 50. Owners were often too busy to give us the time of day. We managed to accumulate responses from 27 restaurants, with all but two acknowledging the information was informative. 18 restaurants would use the links provided. Only six said they would change from their original practice, and all restaurants said they had never been approached by individuals trying to promote cost-efficient, sustainable practices. Everyone agreed that these practices were either important or very important, except for one owner. Most also believed that the city cared but need to implement more policies. Originally, we had expected better results with our survey and Facebook likes. We can't say that our project was a total failure, because we did get a few businesses to change. Although we did not meet our goals, we did learn a lot and met some good people. And what's more important to us is that we changed.